Uh, so, can you see the title of presentation? Yeah? Yes. Well, this picture uh, was uh, generated by artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, it when I ask, asked it uh, to uh, make some uh, picture of sustainable uh, sustainability and uh, well organized uh, community it uh, generates uh, kind of uh, such picture and you can see green zones uh, water bodies and some uh, facilities and infrastructure inside a uh, green environment well first of all I will explore and um, let's discuss the importance of environmental management and sustainability in modern city. Uh, then uh, we should mention um, the very the prominent role of geographic information systems in territory management and the relevance of GIS in making decisions. Uh, for healthy and sustainable uh, future of the city. Uh, as you probably know, uh, the environmental management is uh, crucial for preserving natural resources, protecting ecosystems, and ensuring a better future for generations to come. Uh, well, uh, here mm, you can see an example of uh, environmental management in mining process. Um, as you can see in the infographic, uh, the issues that uh, should be managed uh, is uh, clear water uh, because uh, in my um, all mining companies use uh, water in the technological cycle another option is uh, mine waste Uh, so, it is important to ensure the long-term physical and chemical stability of all mine uh, waste, including rocks, and so on. Emergency and response. 
ensure all stakeholders are well prepared to prevent, address, respond and recover from emergencies. And finally, biodiversity, protect ecosystems and the series they provide. Uh, um, here at the right you can find fantastic Harastishevsky query in Ukraine near Zhitomir uh, city and uh, this query uh, left uh, by granite uh, withdrawal from uh, from the uh, geological environment and nowadays uh, the beautiful lake is in this uh, query so uh, it's an example of uh, rehabilitation of landscape uh, after um, mine activities. Uh, well, um, and let's now repeat uh, some important issues of GIS and environmental management. And now I ask you to scan the code and uh, I am going to propose you some interact, uh, interactive and creative activity. Uh, well, can, uh, uh, you can scan code or another option is uh, go um, follow the link and uh, try to type down um, the keywords what do you think about uh, the topic of environmental management and GAS and what words or concepts uh, that come to your mind. Hello? So you can enter uh, a word and another word and then submit uh, some responses hello and so also Vladislav you are welcome to uh, join our interactive activity. Marina? Yes. So you can follow the link. Well, I think uh, you have a kind of one minute. Mm. 
with old keyboards. Have you finished uh, your words? Hello. So when you finished, uh, you just uh, need to type, type submit. Yes. Uh, so we have uh, three responses. If uh, uh, it will be uh, more students, of course, uh, the number of responses will uh, be Uh, much more and let's uh, thank you for your responses and let's uh, re let's return to our presentation and see uh, all the keywords uh, so mm, let's repeat some uh, basics of uh, GIS concepts mm, of course uh, every GIS software uh, it's uh, people it's uh, uh, spot all data it's software it's hardware and methods that we use to analyze this data uh, 
uh, well, nowadays, uh, the one of the most popular concept of uh, GIS uh, is uh, Spatter Data Infrastructure. Well, uh, Spatter Data Infrastructure It's a data infrastructure implementing a framework of geographic data, metadata, users, and tools that are interactively connected in order to use spatial data in an efficient and flexible way. Another, techno another definition is uh, that uh, SDI is technology, policies, standards, human resources, and related activities necessary to acquire, process, distribute, use, maintain, and uh, preserve spatial data. Uh, every uh, spatial data infrastructure is a uh, coordinated series of agreements on technology standards institutional agreements and policies that enable discovery um, the discovery and use of ge geospatial information by users and for purposes uh, other than those it was created for and a uh, very important uh, key word of spatial data infrastructure is interoperability Interoperability means that uh, your data on uh, some important issues in landscape, in city, uh, is available to another users. So interoperability uh, means uh, that you use uh, some clear standards and you can share your spatial information uh, via infrastructure and so another users uh, also can uh, reach the data and can use this data in the um, projects and um, Uh, well, the European Union has its own uh, spatial data infrastructure, uh, which is called INSPIRE, Infrastructure for Spatial Information in Europe. And you can see logo of this uh, uh, project. And this INSPIRE project is implementing rules on interoperability of spatial data sets and services and, and technical guidelines, uh, specify common data models, code lists, map layers, and additional metadata on the interoperability to be used when exchanging spatial data sets. And uh, mm, this year, uh, you can follow the link. And uh, take part in European conference uh, Green Data for All that will take place on November 28 and 29 in Brussels. So you can uh, follow the link and uh, uh, see uh, the agenda uh, full of uh, to this proposal uh, and uh, see all issues that uh, uh, Mm, 
that is connected with this uh, green agenda. Another important uh, organization uh, that allows uh, that uh, are, that is making uh, standards is uh, Open Gear Special Consortium. And uh, its idea to span across uh, jurisdictions, uh, regions, and communities, and uh, make environmental data a core example of uh, spatial data infrastructure. And you can see how this data, uh, uh, how we can share um, the map data um, among uh, national mapping agencies, municipal offices, and uh, finally consumers who need to know uh, where uh, he or she is in uh, the city environment and uh, uh, how can they use this data about uh, some important issues. Uh, well, Uh, geographic information system inter integrate data through a uh, systematic process that involves the collection, organization, and analysis of spatial data information. And uh, mm, uh, well, let's uh, repeat our mm, main concepts of uh, data interaction, it's of course uh, uh, spatial data, attribute data, metadata, uh, gear referencing, it means uh, assigning geographic coordinates, latitude and longitude to spatial data. Uh, this geo referencing ensure that all spatial features align correctly with the Earth's surface. Georeferencing allows uh, disparate data sources to be overlaid and analyzed together. Uh, another issue is uh, spatial analysis that performs spatial uh, but and we can uh, perform this analysis by applying various tools and techniques to understand relationships, patterns, and trends within the spatial data. Uh, data uh, transformation uh, and data sharing via internet and continuous update of data. Uh, so, um, the spatial information means coordinates and the shape of uh, different features on the Earth's surface. Attribute uh, semantic information provides a description of this data. And topological information, another important part, uh, means describes the relative position of objects uh, um, relative to each other. Uh, here you can see um, 
in the picture examples of uh, topological um, network uh, relations. Also, uh, um, the topological example of topological relation is a neighborhood. For example, you have uh, land parcel, and uh, this land parcel um, have its uh, borders or margins with another one. Uh, so you have uh, mutual um, edge, mutual uh, border, and you should take care of this border, for example. Uh, Spatial data sources. Of course, uh, we can capture uh, our data from maps uh, that have been published before, uh, crowdsource uh, data sources, OpenStreetMap, GeoNames, uh, Wikimapia, Mapillary, and other um, interesting uh, crowdsource uh, platforms, uh, land survey, and then we can uh, capture the data by uh, uh, geodetic techniques uh, using total stations, uh, mobile mapping, photogrammetry, or um, GPS technologies. And uh, a huge amount of uh, remote sensing data by different sensors from um, uh, airplanes, uh, satellites, uh, and other uh, platforms. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the data uh, that we should use in city management process uh, should be of good quality. Uh, what does it mean quality? Uh, well, when we are speaking about quality, um, uh, we should take care of uh, how to measure this quality. And um, the scientific uh, discipline uh, that help us to measure and uh, to evaluate uh, the quality is uh, qualitology. It's a science based on a system of interrelated scientific principles of quality management theory, uh, qualimetry, and metrology. Uh, well, here you can see uh, the book by Pepe Martinez, where he explain some issues of data quality. Uh, speaking about GIS, we should uh, understand uh, the principles of total quality management in um, Uh, when we are dealing with spatial data. Of course, it's the availability, uh, sharing, and mutual use of spatial data. Uh, there are many users who know less about the quality of spatial data, and uh, you can find on the net uh, some data of low quality and uh, maps 
that are not relevant to uh, the situation. Uh, the issue is that uh, GIS allows to use of spatial data in all types of applications, regardless of the feasibility of using certain data sets. Modern GIS offers almost no quality management tools, and uh, every person can make a map uh, and uh, publish uh, a map on the net uh, and uh, this uh, map can be uh, of uh, poor uh, quality. The distance between the people who use spatial data and those who are best informed about the quality of spatial data, professional, uh, is increasing. And assessment of uh, the quality of maps is at the intersection of a number of related disciplines. It's, of course, cartography, uh, IT, information technologies, and cognitive science. Well, cartography has vast experience in assessing the quality of maps. And considering quality spatial data, most users only consider the uh, positional accuracy of the data. However, spatial quality has different aspects, uh, positional precision, time precision, completeness, logical sequence, and um, discrimination data. Analysis of maps from the standard from, stand, uh, from the standpoint of model cognitive concept is a comprehensive study of elements and properties of a geographical map to determine its quality and assess the degree of suitability of every map uh, to user. Uh, well, nowadays, uh, GIS and GIS science is becoming a leading interdisciplinary field that studies spatial data and the, uh, this data processing. An important trend is computer science technologies involved in the creation uh, in the mapping, map creation process. Today's service personalization trends can be uh, realized through flexibility, GIS technology, and the emergence of new pro professions such as GIS consultants that help users figure out the requirements for their services and applications. Uh, another issue is uh, usability engineering. Is a field that deals with human computer interaction and, in particular, the development of user friendly computer interfaces. Interface techniques to achieve efficiency and elegance in interface design. In our option, usability engineering uh, is a valuable field for geomatics education. Uh, cognitive science is an interdisciplinary field that studies the intelligence and thinking of uh, a human being, uh, the tasks and functions of cognition in the broadest sense. Uh, cognitive uh, scientists study user behavior by focusing on how people represent, process, and transform information. Uh, the evaluation um, of the maps can also be based on the linguistic concept of the map, the perception and memorization of its content, concentration and emotions that arise when interacting with the map. Uh, so, uh, the category of quality is compliance with the certain criteria determined by uh, every user. 
Uh, first of all, the quality of a map, the quality of data, uh, all the criteria we can group in four uh, groups. The quality of the initial data, uh, technological uh, characteristics of uh, a map, consumer characteristics, and scientific and social significance. Uh, well, mm, here you can see the sources of uh, user satisfaction. It's a service quality, system quality, and information quality. Uh, let's move to uh, GIS Science and see uh, how does it work. Uh, we use Patel data to model a uh, real world. And, of course, mm, we use our world view uh, to interpret uh, for interpretation of uh, data about this uh, real world. Uh, we can capture a huge amount of spatial data from satellites, from different sensors, um, put this data in uh, a data model, make some manipulations, and uh, finally make uh, decisions. Uh, uh, for our uh, territory or environmental management. Uh, uh, well, in uh, in this In this process, uh, it's important to understand uh, main map functions. Of course, it's communicative uh, basic function, which consists in strong and transmitting spatial information. Another operational relates to the solution of various practical uh, problems. And cognitive that is based on the study of natural and social uh, phenomena and the acquisitions of new knowledge about them. In this case, uh, in a map production and use process, uh, we should go, we should tell about um, that map act in a, uh, different roles as a tool of research and as a subject of research in the form of model. Uh, the great um, scientific uh, and practical significance of uh, maps allows them to be used as effective means of studying the world around us and it is cognitive function. Uh, you can see um, uh, in the picture uh, Cartesius uh, and his quote is cognito ergo sum in Latin usually translated as I think therefore I am so we should think about our um, data and try to figure out how this data can explain our uh, world in our uh, Ukrainian tradition we have some branch of uh, research is cartographic method of research. It's independent section of cartography which studies the features and directions of application of cartographic uh, works in various fields of practical uh, activities. Uh, so, this uh, method <coughs> help us to get the best result 
of uh, maps using. Some historical uh, examples. Um, Alexander von Gumbold is a German uh, geographer, researcher. Mm, he went to South America, Latin America, in a number of expeditions, and he figured out, uh, studying the relationship between vegetation and climates, uh, he substantiated the idea of uh, horizontal vegetation zones in the plains and vertical altitudinal zones in the mountains. Uh, you can see in the map uh, that isotherms uh, uh, of equal temperature uh, is kind of uh, parallel lines uh, that are going from south to north. And in Europe, uh, this is a term, uh, zero as a term, for example, goes uh, further to north because of uh, half stream uh, current. Another option uh, is the works of uh, Vasily Dokuchayev and Lev Berg. Um, they are uh, found uh, their scientific uh, theories by using maps. For example, it's a soil map that has been present uh, to uh, Paris, uh, Paris uh, exhibition in 1900. Uh, uh, so, Uh, you can find in the brown color uh, Chernozem, it's black soil, uh, and all these uh, soils are shown on a map uh, like a circles, like a, um, a latitudinal zones uh, that goes uh, behind the temperature uh, is a line. Uh, due to the presence of large plains East European and West Siberian, uh, uh, you can see a good example of uh, Identifying horizontal latitudinal zones in a more or less pure form, quite close to theoretical models. Uh, Lev Berg, uh, in his uh, work The Experience of Divine and Siberian Turkestan Intel Landscape and Morphological uh, Regions, uh, he also described 14 landscape zones of which the following are crossed into the territory of Kazakhstan. And uh, you can see also uh, the shape of the zones are um, like uh, belts uh, that spread from east to west in one uh, latitude uh, corridor. Another option or another example of spatial 
uh, spatial distribution is uh, uh, Johann von Thunen model and his idea of uh, isolate state in which zones of different specialization of agriculture uh, strictly calculated by prices were located around a single city and uh, here you can see different colors for uh, some activities of people uh, that are closer or farther from the city center it's uh, horticulture and uh, dairying forestry crop rotation uh, and finally grazing at the edge of the um, this isolated state and he explains this uh, distribution uh, because of prices of this production for city users. Uh, well, looking at the map, we should understand that um, it helps us uh, to uh, find uh, some important issues uh, that are not obvious. For example, you can see the city of uh, Egypt, sorry, the um, Egypt. Uh, however, the territory of the state uh, is uh, differs by uh, population so uh, we can uh, we should understand that uh, the activity uh, of people and uh, the pressure on environment are uh, differs from place to place so the real distribution of people is uh, very differs from uh, the city, uh, this state borders mm. well maps uh, help us to use uh, a huge variety of research methods. First of all, map descriptions. Uh, this analysis of maps in order to obtain uh, qualitative and quantitative characteristics. It's graphic techniques. It's construction of various kind of profiles, uh, sections, graphs, schemes, flowcharts, etc. Uh, graphic uh, analytical techniques. Uh, and when we use some analytical functions and finally uh, the mathematical cartographical modeling uh, I will uh, give you some example of this modeling uh, later and uh, we can use a different uh, hardware uh, to analyze maps um, we have four levels of mechanization visual analysis instrumental analysis semi-automatic and automatic research GIS allows to uh, use computer analysis to our spatial data uh, uh, one interesting example is map algebra is a set based algebra for managing geographic data proposed by uh, by Dana Tomlin 
in the early 19th, 1980s. It's a set of primitive operations of a geographical information system that allows two or more raster layers of similar size to create a new uh, raster layer. So we can uh, compare uh, the map stake and every cell in uh, one raster image uh, we can perform some uh, algebra operation. Uh, uh, we can summarize two images, uh, divide uh, one image uh, and uh, use different uh, equations to compare uh, this data and make uh, decisions. Uh, we use some alge algebra function uh, to get uh, new information from data sets. Uh, first of all, it's arithmetic operations, statistical uh, operations, trigonometric operation, and exponential and logarithmic operations. So uh, we can overlay um, the polygon or grids to get some more um, useful information. Another option is topological overlay. Uh, the example of this operation is clip, array, split, identify, uh, or identity, union, and intersect. Uh, here is topological operation of uh, relatively to points and polygon layers. Uh, we can find a point in polygon uh, or line segment that intersects polygon and another uh, topological uh, information. Here is an example of how Mm, it's a study of watershed management and ecological balance in the southern Germany. Uh, uh, here's the, the our colleagues, Schaller, uh, use a geological map, uh, altitude uh, map, relief. Uh, aerial photographs, uh, geological uh, structures uh, to combine uh, the all the features and get some useful uh, decision. Uh, we can act we can make out um, different methodology uh, while working with maps. First of all, uh, it's possible to study a cartographic image uh, without any transformation, using, for example, visual analysis, descriptions, measurements, and other. Another option is transformation of cartographic image. Uh, we can transform, it, uh, transform a map in another form. And uh, the third way is decomposition of uh, cartographic image into components. It's a spe specific type of transformation. Uh, here uh, you can see um, the, a map of China at its decomposition um, when we show only population density. Uh, so uh, we can decompose uh, the landscape and show uh, some important parts of this landscape. Uh, 
Here you can see an examples of uh, ways how to work with maps, mm, with map series and atlases. It's comparison of maps of different time, uh, joint study of maps of different subjects, study of analogous maps, comparison of maps reflecting the same phenomena but within different territories, and joint analysis of maps of different scales. Uh, the one example uh, has been made by uh, Alfred Wegener, who found uh, that, uh, for example, South America and Africa uh, vary uh, in some historical perspective has uh, mutual age. Mm. Another example is Alexei Tillo, uh, the geologist uh, who discovered the connection between relief and geological structure. Uh, you can see uh, the examples of uh, relief of uh, Europe and uh, its uh, tectonic and uh, geologic structure. It's quite similar uh, shape. Another example is Anuchin. Uh, it's uh, also Russian uh, researcher um, who make uh, the comparison of uh, centers of tall stature and short stature. And nowadays, uh, we can find uh, the similar maps on the net. Uh, well, let's uh, move through scientific research. Uh, it uh, has uh, a list of uh, issues. Uh, first of all, task statement, uh, then preparation for examination, uh, research, and interpretation of result, uh, so-called reflection. Scientific reflection is a criticism and analysis of theoretical knowledge carried out on the basis of method, uh, methods characteristics of field of scientific knowledge. Uh, here uh, you can see some example of uh, GIS use. First of all, classification problem. It's uh, where we have set of objects divide and should divide in some uh, classes. Uh, here, example of uh, motor vehicle deaths and how uh, can we uh, show this data uh, in a different uh, sign uh, values. And different uh, kind of scales or circles, uh, examples of carplet uh, map. Uh, it's a very popular uh, kind of uh, data, spatial data representation. Uh, here you can see some examples of uh, dividing the data set into a group, into a classes. Um, first method below called quantile, uh, when we divide the data set 
in the equal classes. Another option, uh, so the number of units in every class is uh, the same. Another option is uh, equal intervals. Uh, so the margin of every interval is uh, uh, similar. And uh, last example is uh, natural breaks uh, that we find uh, another uh, way how to divide our data sets in class. Uh, you can see red graphs that show the data distribution around the um, territorial units. Uh, and here some examples. So we can classify every data set in different ways. Another option is unification. It's uh, the process of data, uh, the construction of uh, unified information model. Uh, in this case, we should uh, find the data similarity and divide this data into some uh, classes. And finally, uh, visualization. Uh, the founder uh, of modern approaches to data visualization is Jacques, uh, Jean-Louis Bertin, and he has uh, proposed uh, six graphical variables. It's a shape, size, um, brightness, structure, color, and orientation. And these six uh, variables allows us to show different data on a map. Uh, here you can see how uh, people acquire inf information. First of all, we see uh, very uh, small structure and then it uh, much more uh, clear information. Another option is uh, how we can use uh, spatial data is centrography. Uh, it means this descriptive statistic method that allows it measure the center um, geometrics uh, or weight center of uh, some spatial data. In this case, we can see uh, mean center of population for United States uh, during the uh, years from 1780 to 2010. So you can see the trend how uh, the population uh, has uh, moving to the west. And finally, application of GIS in environmental management. Uh, first of all, mapping world uh, ecosystems. Uh, well, uh, while uh, mapping world ecosystem, we should uh, solve uh, interesting problem. How uh, can, can we classify uh, the Earth's surface? How can we divide the Earth's surface in different uh, regions? Uh, we use complex uh, data of bedrocks, groundwater, soils, surface water, landforms, biota, and topoclimate. Uh, and finally, uh, we can make a decision 
of how these ecosystems are distributed uh, on the Earth's surface. Uh, here you can uh, follow the link and see uh, the article of how uh, do they uh, they make this uh, uh, maps. You can also follow the link or scan uh, this QR code and explore a tapestry of world ecosystems. Uh, another example is uh, very beautiful uh, distribution of um, oceans uh, or dividing the ocean aquatories uh, to present uh, water uh, ecosystems. So it's possible uh, also uh, to follow the link and see uh, this example. Uh, land cover change analysis. Uh, here also you can see story maps made by American geographers who um, let, let's move this via this link and see For example, land cover. Uh, well, uh, every story map is a very good example of uh, how can we present our uh, results of our uh, research. Uh, what is land use and uh, how uh, uh, land use can change? You can see that uh, nowadays in uh, where people uh, cut uh, the forest, uh, they establish croplands and build cities and uh, it uh, can damage ecosystem and biodiversity and while we use uh, RGIS software we can show these uh, changes directly on the map in this way you can see mm, it's a difference between uh, two years uh, 1991 and 2001 green is uh, forest, uh, yellow is agriculture and uh, orange is settlements. So you can see that uh, agricultural land in this uh, uh, district of uh, Australia is uh, changes. And uh, this data can be, uh, can uh, be 
captured from the space, from the space uh, images, from satellite images. And uh, here our colleagues explain how does it works. Uh, some other examples of coastal uh, flood plain mapping. It's a data from Federal Emergency Management uh, Agency from the United States. Mapping disaster response. You can follow the link and find interesting video. And uh, let's move to another option. Uh, another chapter of our presentation is Sustainable Development and GIS. Uh, well, uh, making a sustainable uh, territory is possible uh, while we use scientific approach to urban planning. Uh, transportation and infrastructure development. Uh, let me give you some examples of uh, understanding uh, these uh, issues. First of all, mm, we should make a conceptual model. Uh, uh, how can we understand this process? Uh, the conceptual model can be presented visually in a kind of uh, di diagram. Uh, then we can present our cons uh, concept using some uh, graphical uh, variables, some uh, graphical scenes. And uh, we can, uh, this process uh, is consists of uh, five steps. Uh, first of all, uh, we on physiological uh, level, uh, our brain percept uh, some phenomena. And then we transform our perception in, into symbols, into metaphors, into abstractions. Uh, here you can see an example of uh, ancient uh, symbol. It's a human lion. Uh, ancient people uh, of course, make this artifact uh, because of the symbolization of uh, the environment. Also, uh, we can symbolize uh, a beef, sorry, uh, a cow. Uh, it was uh, ancient Greek letter alpha. And the name of the cow in Greek is Aleph. So, uh, also we can make symbols of different trees in one uh, symbol for every uh, particular tree. Uh, then we, we create conceptions, ideas, categories. We divide our world in some uh, categories. And uh, then we connect these categories in a system, make judgments. And finally, uh, we should make this a story, a narration, a discourse. And all our representations uh, are discursive, so we present our knowledge in some kind of discourse. 
it's important to ask some uh, questions to ourselves what is our worldview uh, which one is uh, which one would i like to have who am i how do i know reality how do i act what are my values and goals and what is my calling what is my life goal so answering these questions can help can help us to uh, make um, good maps uh, speaking about sustainable development we should uh, make some conceptual models for example uh, like this one uh, and the most interesting uh, object of interest is interaction zone between nature and society it's uh, some improvement of uh, territory it's uh, changing the state of resources um, because of human activity it's violation of natural conditions it's reducing the negative effect of uh, these changes uh, so uh, we can part uh, make a particular model of our phenomena of our process that we should put on a map uh, uh, here is examples of Boris Radoman uh, theory of ecological paralyzation, uh, polarization of the territory. Uh, first of all, we have uh, green territories is wild areas and orange territories is uh, centers of human activity. And in his theory, uh, the population creates kind of uh, grids. Uh, the green grid is uh, a grid of uh, green territories, uh, forest, uh, natural ecosystem, and the orange grid is transport infrastructure. So, uh, in his opinion, urban centers and expressways and residential areas uh, should uh, theoretically uh, make um, uh, the much more distance should be between the natural uh, um, biodiversity protection areas and uh, natural and uh, city centers so natural in a polarized landscape is equal to the city only then can it be preserved in the conditions of industrial society environment impact affection uh, means how GIS facilitates spatial analysis for identifying sensitive areas and predicting impacts. Uh, first of all, we should collect the data, uh, make our maps, uh, monitoring uh, all the spatial phenomena, and make uh, some scientifically grounded decisions um, here you also can uh, see some examples of how we use uh, GIS for NATO related assessment uh, you can follow the link I will uh, give all the links uh, and this presentation um, to you so you can uh, do all this full of this link yourself uh, one of very interesting um,
uh, book uh, made by Roger Tomlinson. It's a father of GIS in Canada and uh, probably all over the world. Uh, uh, this book uh, has maybe five or six editions. And in this book, he present his experience how to uh, make uh, the GIS uh, of some territory. Uh, he proposed uh, 10 steps of how should we act to make uh, good and um, useful um, GIS uh, geographic information system uh, for some purposes. Uh, well, uh, American uh, ESRI Corporation uh, is presenting a huge amount of books. Uh, you can follow uh, the link and find uh, book series Applying GIS. It's easy to find this books on the net and uh, here they present examples of how uh, scientists and IT specialists and municipally um, municipal uh, governments use uh, GIS technologies uh, for finding a sustainable balance uh, for environmental management uh, dealing with disasters, delivering water and other important issues. Uh, here you can see approach how to make resilient communities. Uh, well, stakeholder. Uh, first of all, uh, we have uh, some types of stakeholders who use uh, GIS data is, of course, uh, environmental and natural resource agencies. Uh, they use maps for environmental re regulation. Uh, well, here you can see example of uh, story map of uh, Albatross uh, biodiversity monitoring. Uh, example of uh, Earth observing uh, using spatial data. Here is an uh, example of my work. Uh, it's Echo Pass of Kyivshina. Mm. It's It was a project uh, made with Echo League and it was very interesting experience uh, making a map um, the map series for uh, children for uh, teachers who want to show uh, beautiful ecological points of interest in, of interest in uh, Vizhgorodsky and Abukhovsky region near Kiev uh, also uh, we use GIS uh, for ma management uh, some city infrastructure, some facilities, public buildings, parks, open spaces, etc. And uh, uh, here uh, you can follow also follow the link and see uh, what are ArcGIS story maps. And you can try to use this technology to present your own data. 
And finally, uh, my, uh, let me present my small uh, research. It's about uh, Uh, well, our life and our cities are strongly influenced by signs in city landscapes that carry particular meanings. Uh, created landscapes can be assertions of power over nature or over neighbors. Uh, this uh, science in city landscape also important part of um, our environment. Um, here you can see uh, the destroying of the monastery buildings by Bolsheviks in Kyiv. And uh, here you can see the project of uh, government center in Kyiv. So uh, the idea was to destroy uh, Christian church, instead build uh, kind of monuments to Lenin. Uh, and here you can see at the right, it's a military, ministry of foreign affairs. Uh, they have built it. However, another part of this ensemble uh, have not uh, built yet uh, because of uh, Second World War. Uh, nowadays, uh, we are changing our city landscape and uh, make kind of decommunization and uh, I propose to everybody make their own input in this uh, pro project. For example, uh, interesting point of interest murals in Kyiv and put this data on a map uh, using EpiCollect uh, software via your smartphones. So, uh, thank you for your attention. And another option is uh, to uh, make your own account on StoryMaps uh, website and try to Put your research on a map uh, using this advanced technique. Well, thank you for your attention.